In this screencast, I want to help you understand why there can be really large differences in energy consumption between buildings that have uh, apparently the same R value of, uh, of insulation in walls and, and ceilings. Now, this can be hard to quantify because uh, few buildings are identical. It's hard to find examples for comparison, and even fewer buildings are, are used in identical ways. So it can be hard to put numbers to it, um, but if you've been in the building business for a while, you've probably got a sense that some kinds of insulations just work a whole lot better than others, and, and that's what I want to explain here. Um, now, we, we do have something we're very lucky, some information we're very lucky to have, and that's a study done in the province of Ontario by Brock University. Uh, they had the opportunity to analyze the uh, energy performance of, of two homes in southern Ontario. Uh, both homes had identical floor plans, uh, both homes were built by the same crew, and they were wired for all kinds of measurements for a one-year period of time indoor temperature, outdoor temperature, wall cavity temperature, energy consumption. Uh, it was all analyzed and graphed. The only difference between the two homes was that one had standard fiberglass bat insulation in the walls and the other had a foam based insulation system in the walls, structural insulated panels. Uh, the attics of both homes were insulated with the same fiber based system. And what they found was that over the course of a year, the foam-based home used approximately 50% less energy than the fiber-based home. Now that's an enormous difference for homes that were virtually identical in every other way. What's even more remarkable is that the fiber-based home used R20 worth of fiberglass bats in the wall. The SIPS home had panels that were just rated at R17. So you have to wonder, well, what's going on? I mean, uh, this surely would be at a disadvantage, and yet it uses half the energy. So um, to, uh, to understand why this is happening, you need to think back to something that you may remember from high school physics class, and that's that there are uh, three kinds of heat transfer mechanisms in the universe. Um, the first is conduction, and that happens when materials with a temperature difference are in actual physical contact with each other. Then there's something called convection. This happens when air uh, is warmed and becomes less dense and, and rises, and as it does, it creates a, a movement of air that transfers energy from one place to the other. The third mechanism is radiation. And this is the mechanism by which uh, the Sun warms the Earth, for instance. It's, it's one example. Um, the Sun, the Earth, uh, there's 93 million miles of vacuum between us. So conduction and convection certainly can occur. The fact that the Earth is warmed by the Sun uh, shows that radiation is at work in that situation. Now the main takeaway here from this screencast is that R values of insulation only address one of the three heat transfer mechanisms. They only address conduction. They make no mention of convection and radiation and this is precisely why we see such differences here. Um, let me give you a little illustration. Imagine you've got a wall cavity and it's got some fiber-based insulation in it. Now, uh, it's a winter day, it's, uh, it's nice and warm inside and it's quite a bit colder outside. Because air can move through fiber-based insulation, uh, convective air currents are set up within that wall cavity. Now this is true even when the wall cavity is sealed. As we know, 
very few wall cavities are completely sealed, even when they do have vapor barrier and air barrier and all kinds of things. Um, that just makes matters worse. Uh, but let's just imagine for a moment that the wall cavity is completely sealed. We're still going to have convective currents set up here in this wall cavity. And, and in fact, um, the colder it gets outside compared with the inside temperature, the stronger the convective currents are and the less effective the insulation is. This fact was has been proven several times by people down at the Oak Ridge Research Lab. They have uh, created uh, mock-up roof structures and they've analyzed real-world insulation performance with differing temperatures across the structure. And what they found is that when temperature differences exist to the same extent that they might uh, occur in a Canadian winter, for instance, the real-world effectiveness of that fiber-based insulation system drops by about a half uh, when the going gets tough, when you really need that kind of uh, insulating quality. Now by comparison, if you have uh, some kind of a foam structure, that could be spray foam or sheets of foam, or it doesn't really matter, um, these foams are really very impervious to air movement. Uh, air just can't can't get into them very far. Even open cell foam doesn't actually allow a lot of air to move through it, and certainly not closed cell foams. So the difference that you're seeing here from uh, one kind of home to another with apparently similar insulation values has to do with the fact that um, the fiber-based buildings, fiber-insulated buildings, can often have a very high heat loss due to convection, but that's not measured whatsoever in the R rating of the insulation. This, I think, is one of the areas where building codes could be improved considerably, um, because all we have to build to now uh, is, is to meet a certain R level, but R level is only part of the part of the equation. It's, it's only the conduction part. It's not the convection part. It's not the radiation part. That's another another issue, another screencast. Um, but this explains the difference uh, that, you'll, that you've probably uh, sensed out in the real world. And you'll want to understand this so you can explain it to clients who, uh, especially those clients who are particularly interested in maximizing energy performance. Now I want to leave you with one other thing. Uh, I chose this image uh, in particular, this is some uh, fiber-based insulation that was pulled from a building uh, that was uh, less than 10 years old. And as you can see, this this gray stuff here, uh, this is all mold. Um, for the same reason that conduct convective heat loss can be considerable through through fiber-based insulation, uh, this insulation is also vulnerable to mold growth. Uh, the mechanism is, is something that you, you may understand. If warm, moist indoor air is allowed to penetrate into the insulation um, cavity, it will eventually come to a point where it, it will cool enough during winter to form uh, drops of liquid condensation somewhere within the wall cavity when it reaches the dew point. Um, Moisture inside of a wall cavity is not what you want. Uh, foam-based insulations, especially closed cell foam-based systems, don't have this hazard uh, because they've shut down uh, the convective heat loss. That's really why foam works so well and why, from a mold point of view, it's also a whole lot more reliable.